All right, welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Daggett. This is Daggett Designs. Uh, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe for more drawing tutorials. Give this video a like, really helps the channel out. And leave me a comment down below letting me know what you thought. So today we're going to be drawing a geisha in sort of a neo-traditional style. It's going to be like a blend between neo-traditional and traditional. So starting off with a lead pencil just for sketching. I'm going to come in. I'm pretty much just drawing in like an upside down egg sort of shape here. Like so. Don't have to be too perfect, don't stress about it because we're going to make some changes and refinements. Alright, now this one's going to be of a three quarter sort of view. So to start off with, I'm just going to draw in a center line that wraps down the front portion of the face. Sort of like so. Okay, uh, I'm going to cut off the side plane of our head here. So almost if you imagine this top half is like a circle and you're slicing the side of it off, okay? So just drawing off, uh, drawing in that sliced off sort of area, like so. And now to drop in my center line, I think I just want to cut through the middle of that circle and across the front. Now you got to remember this is curved. It's not a flat shape, so you want to curve around with it like so. And now I'm going to come from the bottom of that circle or between here and here about halfway and draw another curved line in. It's going to give us a general space for our nose. And then you can come down another half between here and here and just drop in another guideline for the mouth. Uh, now at this stage, the chin's looking real shrunken down. So like I said, we can make adjustments as we go or as necessary. And I think I just want to bring that out just a little bit more. That should do, we'll see how that comes out. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to start with the eyebrows. Uh, so we're going to leave a little gap between here and here because this is like a three quarter view. So I want to drop in a line where I want the eyebrow to start. And you can even bring that back a little bit further if you'd like. And I'm just going to draw, this is the start of my eyebrow line. I'm going to come up and back like so for our eyebrow. And at this stage, just a little thick sort of black line that tapers off like that will do. Okay. Uh, the other eyebrow is going to be in the same place, but it's going to start very, very close to the center line. Almost, almost on the center line, just off to the left a little bit. And it's going to just come up and to the left side like so. Okay. You can thicken that up towards the front if you'd like. Now from here, the sort of top portion of the nose is going to be uh, visible with a line. So just dropping down and back out a little bit like this. Now the angle for this is a bit tricky. I like to come towards the center line and then back out just a tad like so. And then for the actual nose, you want to imagine that line continues down and just draw a little ball shape in. That's going to give you the tip of the nose. Okay. Behind this is going to be a smaller ball shape. That's going to be the nostril. Okay. And same for the other side. But of course, the other side is going to be more uh, sort of obscured. And in this case, I want to make the nose a little bit bigger. Just a tad on either sort of side like this. And now I like to just line the very front of the tip of the nose. Come back and under for my nostril and a little bit on the other side for the nostril that's going to give us a nice nose shape and once those ovals are refined or or erased there then you just have a nice sort of nose shape there and again you can play around with that now i'm going to come back from the nostril area on an angle to my eyebrow like this to here and that's going to give me a line to start off my first eye so it's going to be sitting just underneath the eyebrow here and I'm going to bring a line up and then taper it up towards the back of the eyebrow there, like so. And that's a little bit too much of an angle for me. So again, I'm just going to erase and adjust this. I'm going to smooth out that fucking... So just adjusting this, uh, bringing up a curve. Like 
like so and then for the underneath portion we can come under and just join in like so okay for the other side you're going to do practically the same thing you're going to come down from your eyebrow to create a line like so and uh, once you're at that line you can bring down your eye shape like this now once you're pretty happy with that bring a line out from your eye create the cheek of your geisha here and bring it all the way down now just underneath the nose uh, again this line now is probably dropped down a little bit too far so I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit and I'm gonna drop two circles in running the center line of the nose there two little circles like this and I'm gonna trace the just the top section of the circles almost like the love heart section come down the back and just flick up gently and then I'm just gonna do three little bumps on the inside like that. And a little curve for our bottom lip. Now from here for the chin, I'm gonna come out very slightly like this and then very sharply bring it sort of back and up towards this circle or this cutoff point. That's gonna give us our chin shape. Now coming back to about here on the chin, I'm going to come down with a bit of a neck here and you want this to be uh, sort of fairly slim so following that same sort of shape uh, on the other side here that's going to give you your neck area and that might be a little bit too thin I think maybe that's a little bit better okay for the ear we're not going to draw in the full ear but basically just the ear shape here and that's going to be in this sort of back portion of our cutoff circle like this and it's going to be from the eyebrow line, eyebrow line uh, to the nose line there that's going to be for our ear circle now for drawing in the hair i'm going to draw in a hairline that starts through about here that's going to be an arch shape like that and it's going to arch around and come down in front of our ear now if you want to, you could sort of make that a little bit wider and make it cut forward a bit more. I think that probably makes more sense. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. And now I'm gonna come out from the other side of the head like this. And we're pretty much just drawing in this long curve that uh, leaves a gap between the curve and the head because this is gonna be for our hair. So coming around. Now for our uh, side bundle of hair here I'll start sort of just above this area here where the eyebrow is coming back We'll come out And around and you want this to sort of come down and underneath uh, where our ear section is here Okay And this bottom section there's gonna be a little loop uh, that comes around the ear like this Okay, so there's that loop of hair. This one sort of comes around like that. And now at the top of all of this, I'm gonna do this sort of uh, long curved rectangular shape, like so. That is going to be one of the ornamental combs in her hair. And you can do these little circles running the length of the comb. And then just little lines connecting that to the base there. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, sort of ornamental comb. At this point, you can drop in your ornamental hairpins. These are pretty much long uh, tapered out rectangles, so they get wider towards the end here. You can draw a circle and a straight line down the middle. And then it's pretty much a circle and a sort of wobbly looking teardrop shape at the end there. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's more sort of traditional style of uh, drawing these there's some really nice near traditional styles of doing it just depends how you want it to look i want to keep these uh, fairly simple in this case 
Now for the back portion of hair, I'm pretty much going to come back a little bit from the front of the comb. Bring that around and behind our uh, ornamental pins at the back here. It's going to give you the back section for the hair. And now pretty much to line the hair, you're pretty much going to follow uh, your curve shape all the way around, just doing these small lines like this. Okay, coming around the side of the face. This line needs to be a bit more solid because that's where our first bigger sort of bundle of hair starts. And you can erase the top of the ear now if that makes it a little bit easier uh, to follow there. And the ear's a little bit forward, so I'm gonna just tuck that back a little bit. Okay. Again, sort of following the shape around. Like this. The inside curves the opposite direction, like that. And then for the big bundle of hair at the back, it's gonna be the same thing, just following our shape around. Now the last thing I wanna do is add some wispy hairs in. They're gonna be uh, really nice for covering up this bottom portion of the neck, making it a lot easier to uh, render later on. So just some long sort of S curves really for these ones. Uh, for the wispy hairs, you pretty much just do these long S curves that sort of follow whatever direction the wind would be blowing in. And these are just hairs that have sort of uh, fallen out of the hair bundles. They're like stray hairs. You can put as many or as few of these as you would like to in your drawing. Okay, now in terms of a sketch, that's it for this one. I'm going to transfer it to some paper, uh, some watercolor paper. That way we can start coloring this one in. Now I've gone ahead and transferred our design to some watercolor paper for painting. Got a couple of brushes. These are Taquan Synthetic number five and number six. And I've got my palette set up ready to go. So we've got carbon black, got a bit of gray wash. This is Pyrol Red, yellow, orange, azo, and a flesh tone or a skin tone. Uh, I made this one mixing some orange, white, and a little bit of burnt umber. So if you don't have a flesh tone, that's how I mixed mine. Just depends how you want to do it. And I've got a bit of water just to help uh, rinse out the brushes and keep things moist. Right, so as always, we're going to start off with our black shading. I always like to start off with all of my heavy black areas. And I'm going to start off by doing this main big portion of hair at the top here. So you want to saturate your brush uh, pretty heavily with black. And I'm going to start at the back of the hair bundle here. And I'm just going to come across and around with a nice amount of black, like so. And we'll just bring that around to about there. Now I can take my other brush, get a bit of water on there and just feather that edge out. Now you don't want a long blend on this. So I don't want to get like a really long area of gray. I just want to feather that edge out nicely uh, so that it goes from black to gray to white, basically the white of the paper. It's going to give us like a highlight space there. Then we're going to come down a little bit, work some black in front of our highlight. And I'm being a little bit messy here, but that's okay because we're going to come in and neaten things up. But I'm just going to drop in a nice area of solid black to start with. Like so. And then I'm going to turn my page and feather out that top edge of our black as well. Again, we're not going for a really long blend. We're just going for that sort of feathered effect to soften the transition between the black and the white of the paper there. And then we can come down to the front of our black here and continue down. Now, as we get to our hairline here, you're going to start to follow the shape of the hairline a little bit. So I'm going to wrap around like this to that section there. And now I will gently soften out that edge so that it blends into my uh, the, the little flicked off lines that make up my hairline. And I will come around this section towards the back like so. Okay, 
and now again moisten my brush and feather that that edge nicely again not going for a super long blend just looking to soften everything nicely okay and that's going to give you a a fairly nice transition between the uh, scalp there the hair and then a nice highlight towards the back there now you're going to basically repeat that process for this bundle and this bundle I'm going to quickly skip through that now just to make things a little bit quicker now once you've done all of those hair bundles we can do these wispy hairs and uh, these are going to be done in a really similar manner but just a little bit of black on the very base of them like this will be plenty a little bit of water and just feather that out and forward uh, it's sort of like if you imagine a bundle of hair that has some wispy sort of hairs coming off of it the bundle would start off tighter and so you would see uh, almost a darker shade or a darker area of hair and then as that wisps out and becomes more I know transparent's not really the right word but as you can see more through the hair looking through it uh, you'd get a little less density of black there so starting off with a really small amount of black towards the base and then just blending that out through the hairs that's going to help give it a nice sort of solid look at the base and help with that wispy appearance as it sort of moves out towards the tip tips of the hair now once you've done your hairs you can wash your brush out i'm going to start working with a little bit of our uh, light gray wash here now with the geisha they usually paint the face white uh, but the sort of neck and the ear area is going to be a little bit less colored it's that sort of focal point at the front of the face that is white so we're going to shade the front using this light gray wash now this side of the face is going to be a little bit darker sort of uh, obscured a little bit to that side so a little bit of gray wash sort of uh, above the eye there and we'll go for a little bit running basically this edge of the nose and sort of blend that out making sure to leave it a little bit lighter towards the edge of the cheek there uh, you know fairly decent amount of gray wash underneath the nose and behind the nostril there it's going to give it a bit of shadow and that's sort of uh, going to make sense with our lighting there as you can see now this part is going to be in a little bit as well so just coming off where our eyebrow is adding a little bit of gray wash to that side and then you can gently sort of feather that out uh, onto the side of the nose like this okay and that'll start to give the nose just a little bit of shape that's going to look uh, really nice a uh, little bit of gray wash on the underside of our eyebrow thing here that sort of fleshy part underneath the eyebrow coming down to where the eye is and at this point I'll make this side a little bit darker you can always add more gray wash and make things darker but you can't really take it away very easily so I know I sort of like to build up both sides gradually and then make decisions on how much more gray wash I'd like to add you know how much more dark I'd like to add uh, underside of the bottom lip can have a fairly prominent shadow underneath it and I like to sort of feather the edges of these out just to lighten them a bit. You don't absolutely have to, but that's something I like to do. And then for the bottom of the chin area, pretty much the underside of the chin is going to have a nice little bit of grey there. And you can blend that up gently. Now the last little bit of grey we're going to do on the face will be just underneath this side cheek. So pretty much angled towards the mouth. Like this. Blend it down and back and just soften the top you don't want to blend it up too much because it's actually defining the bottom of that cheek uh, but you can just soften the top there so it's not such a harsh uh, line and as you can see that sort of gives the face a little bit of uh, definition and it contours it a little bit now if you'd like you can use a little bit of gray wash around the hairline here just to darken up little areas of the face there and this is pretty much the same style of shading that you would do maybe if you were shading a portrait or something like that so if you've ever done um, pencil portraits uh, you know using graphite 
and you sort of know your light and dark uh, this is sort of the same technique you're using here it's no different from doing that you know we're doing more of a stylized image here but there's nothing wrong with uh, sort of shading it a little bit realistically it doesn't have to be super accurate because of the style so just a little bit of flesh tone on my brush here and I'll start maybe with the ear at the back now, that looks a little orange but I'm gonna dilute it with some water and just bring it forward like this and help sort of work it uh, in with the white of the page that way the orange uh, the orangey tone is my deepest sort of tone now I'm gonna bring a bit of that fleshy color just underneath the uh, the neck here like so adding in a, a bit of a shadow underneath the chin and then using some water just to soften that out to more of a pale skin tone and that way like I said that darker sort of uh, burnt orange color is the sort of shadow tone and the uh, washed out color that blends with the white there is a little bit more of the true skin tone and we'll come behind the neck as well just underneath the hair and do the same thing softening it out and blending it in with the rest of the uh, skin tone that's on the neck there all right so that is the sort of flesh tone area the, the face uh, facial area I'd like to leave primarily white as this is a geisha I'm gonna come back in with my other brush here to some yellow orange azo and I'm, I'm gonna do these uh, ornaments uh, the ornamental areas of the hair here I'm gonna do them solid yellow now there's a lot of different ways you could do this you could certainly do some different shading styles on them um, I tend to keep things fairly simple if there's other detailed elements going on such as the hair and this will build a nice contrast between the simplicity of the ornaments and the detail of the hair okay so I'm going pretty simple with this if you wanted to you can go ahead and add some other shades uh, to your hairpins okay a couple other things I'm gonna come in with my pyrrole red now and I'm pretty much just gonna do a little bit of red on either side of the eye and then blend it out using my other brush so a little bit of red towards the front of the eye and you can see when I say a little bit I really mean it and blend it that way turn the page a little bit of red down the other end and blend it forward it's gonna give them those sort of bloodshot eyes look and I, I think that looks really cool uh, especially if you are doing more of a horror style thing or if you're doing uh, like I said it, a lot of the neo-traditional sort of portraits are gonna have this sort of creepy look to them I'm not sure where that style developed but I do like the way it looks I think it's pretty cool okay so once you've got your red areas in the corners of the eye there it starts to look really nice we can apply some red to our lips now you can either do the full lips red or you can just do that sort of middle section which tends to be the case uh, with a lot of geisha designs they've got this almost love heart shape to the lipstick and I, I tend to think that looks pretty cool I might soften the edges out a little bit just to make it look a little bit more blended and not so harsh and I might even bring that red across just a little bit on the bottom lip I think that looks pretty cool now the last little thing I want to do here I think is a bit of a red glow so just adding a little bit of red uh, to the back section here just behind my geisha and then very gently feathering in a circular motion to sort of get it to fade out to the color of the paper and have uh, that little bit of a glow and you can sort of do that in a couple of different areas pretty much wherever you'd like I'm gonna do a little bit up here towards the hair section and I'll flip my page around and why not do some towards the top here as well all right guys I really hope you enjoyed this one if you did make sure you let me know in the comments down below or by giving this video a big thumbs up that really helps out the channel 
And uh, make sure you're subscribed if you're new to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.